Deuteronomy 10. Moses is still going on about how awful the Israelites are so that they'll feel really guilty when God allows them to enter the Promised Land. He doesn't want them to get cocky, so he's just reminding them of why they're very bad people before God rewards them with everything they ever wanted. At that time, the Lord said to me, Chisel out two stone tablets, like the first ones, and come up to me on the mountain. Also, make a wooden ark. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Then you are to put them in the ark. Moses broke the Ten Commandments, so God said, Fine, bring me blank tablets and I'll do it again. Breaking the commandments, literally, somehow doesn't warrant the death penalty. But God just flew into a genocidal rage when the Israelites made a golden calf. So I made the ark out of acacia wood and chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I went up on the mountain with the two tablets in my hands. The Lord wrote on these tablets what he had written before, the Ten Commandments he had proclaimed to you on the mountain, out of the fire, on the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Then I came back down the mountain and put the tablets in the ark I had made, as the Lord commanded me. And they are there now. I like how Moses doesn't mention what the Ten Commandments are. Either that's because he forgot them, or even he knows that everyone will roll their eyes at this point if he says, Thou shalt not kill. Notice that Moses says he made the ark out of acacia wood. Because in Exodus, it was a master craftsman named Bezalel who made the ark. Moses is just straight up taking credit for another man's work. It is biblical plagiarism right in front of our eyes. The Israelites traveled from the wells of Bene Jaakin to Moserah. There, Aaron died and was buried, and Eleazar, his son, succeeded him as priest. From there, they traveled to Gudgodah and on to Jothbathah, a land with streams of water. At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister and to pronounce blessings in his name as they still do today. That is why the Levites have no share or inheritance among their fellow Israelites. The Lord is their inheritance, as the Lord your God told them. Right. Their inheritance is God. I'm sure they are just thrilled to receive the thing that everyone else also has. Or at least so we're told. Now, I had stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights, as I did the first time, and the Lord listened to me at this time also. It was not his will to destroy you. Go, the Lord said to me, and lead the people on their way so that they may enter and possess the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. There goes Moses once again, acting like he saved everyone as if God would really murder his own people and ruin his biography. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for your own good? Yeah, guys, God doesn't ask anything of you. All you have to do is look over your shoulders at all times and worship him and serve him and follow every single insane rule and not have any sex or sexual thoughts until you're married and vote Republican. I mean, it's so easy. To the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Yet the Lord set his affection on your ancestors and loved them. And he chose you, their descendants, above all the nations, as it is today. Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow, and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners, 
for you yourselves were foreigners in Egypt. Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take your oaths in his name. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. Your ancestors who went down into Egypt were seventy in all. And now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the sky. I still don't get how you can circumcise a heart. I don't think these people know how hearts work. And really, God doesn't show partiality? That's literally the basis of every church. You know, God loves us more than them. And accepts no bribes? The Catholic Church historically got in trouble over those bribes. And these people still have no clue how many stars are in the sky, do they? Moses is finally done reminding everyone why they deserve nothing, even though they're about to get everything. And all they have to do to receive these gifts is let God control their lives for all eternity, which is a bad trade. I mean, milk and honey is not that valuable.